Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Here, you and Hal put off have now established the program. The, the head of SRI has given it its blessing. You've gotten a, a, a grant from NASA to work on the ESP teaching machine. And then I gather, uh, as word spread that this project uh, had been established, uh, other talented uh, people mm -hmm. came along. Well, Hal was in touch with Ingo Swan, who was a New York artist mm -hmm. and had already done significant psychic things, out-of-body experiments uh, at the with Eileen Garrett mm -hmm. and Carlos Osis. An out-of-body experiment would be one where you're not only describing what's going on at a distant location or a distant building, mm -hmm. but you seem to be able to go there and wander around the halls, and we can talk about that later. Okay. So Ingo is with us, and Ham and I, in our physicist way, would ask Ingo, can you describe what's in the box, or what's in the envelope, or what's in the next room? And swiftly, Ingo became unhappy with that limitation. He said, you know, this remote viewing that I'm telling you about allows you to focus your attention anywhere on the planet. I can see anything in the universe, and what you're having me do is a trivialization of my ability. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go home and resume painting. And I said, well, what do you wanna do? He said, why don't you have somebody hide in the Bay Area, and I'll describe where they are. Mm -hmm. So Ingo is really the father of remote viewing as we did it for the next couple of decades. Now, now I suppose it's worth mentioning that uh, Hal Putoff and Ingo Swan were both Scientologists, and I, I imagine that their Scientology training uh, inclined them toward this sort of thing. It's true Hal and Ingo were Scientologists, uh, but I, of course, was not a Scientologist, and, and many, many other people who worked with us were not Scientologists. Mm -hmm. Uh, Scientology might be a permission-giving device, but it's not necessary. Okay. Uh, well, where did Ingo... From, from my point of view, becoming a Scientologist is too high a price, is an unnecessarily high price to pay yeah. to develop psychic abilities. Well, did Ingo or Hal discuss any of that at, at the time? I, I was quite familiar with their with their protocol. Yeah. There's uh, Hal and... Hal was very forthcoming with what that was all about and what it required and I was not having any I said let's just do what we're doing mm -hmm. it seems to be working fine mm -hmm. did did Ingo acquire his remote viewing abilities as a result of that background I think Ingo was a lifetime um, genetic child childhood psychic yeah okay I think probably most of these prodigious psychics were early mm -hmm. early showers mm-hmm about that time, we were doing experiments for the CIA mm -hmm. who were interested in our work. And Pat Price, who was another Scientologist, probably heard about our work on the grapevine and said, I've been doing all that, doing that all my life as a police commissioner. Mm -hmm. I'd quiet my mind and describe where the crook was hiding and we'd go and pick him up. And Price came to work with us, mm -hmm. and the CIA was very interested in this, and they said, you guys are wasting your time playing psychic hide-and-go-seek in the Bay Area. Mm 